Hello my friends, in this video we will be exploring the autosomal DNA results of a Trzinets culture sample from Turlogiskia in Lithuania, right here. This person lived in the Middle Bronze Age. Uh, in terms of the timeline of when he lived, he lived in 10 to 7 centuries before the Common Era. Uh, I would say this is actually the Late Bronze Age, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's Late Bronze Age. Yeah, it's labeled as Late Bronze Age. So it's a Late Bronze Age sample from the very south of Lithuania. His uh, Y DNA is R1A, uh, Z645, and his mitochondrial lineage is R, actually H4. Uh, his uh, R Y DNA is, um, I said Z645. Z645 is sort of the wider subclade that his narrower subclade falls into. He has the European uh, Z282. <coughs> He's got the European Z282Y lineage rather than the uh, West Asian Z93 lineage. So his uh, Y DNA is very European. Uh, let's see what he scores with my trade predictor. Uh, we're going to start actually with ethnic calculator. So this is what he scores here. He's closest to Neolithic farmer for number one and Corridware give a Karai from Lithuania for number two. Very interesting. Uh, they are quite equally distant to both of these populations. He's quite equally distant, so uh, you know it's it's kind of interesting how he's got the same distance to Neolithic farmer from Britain and Corded Ware, and these are the two closest populations to him. Followed by that is Yamne from Kalmykia, then Global Aram for a culture. Okay, quite interesting, and the closest model for him is. Uh, is Yaslav and Gvarievich from Ukraine plus Sarazm in Neolithic from Tajikistan, which is definitely very interesting. But keep in mind that this oracle and this ethnicity calculation was done with only 232 SNPs. So when you consider that this ethnicity calculation was done based on such a limited number of SNPs, uh, the result kind of makes sense. So let's see what it, what he scores with um, Admixture Studio. Yurujinsky 13. Here, as you can see, he's very, very Northern European. Uh, kind of looks Finnish with the high amount of Baltic and North Atlantic and very little West Asian. <coughs> kind of looks looks Finnish or Baltic, actually. Uh, I wonder why he doesn't score Finnish as his closest population. Actually, I, I can tell you why. That's because he doesn't score Siberian or, or East Asian admixtures. So, because he doesn't score any of the Siberian or East Asian stuff, he's closest to Balts, Lithuanians, actually, and not to Finns. Also, Finns would score a little bit more North Atlantic and a little bit less Baltic. So, I guess that's why he's closest to Lithuanians and Latvians and not to Finnish people. All right. Um, let's explore what he looks like. Let's go ahead and open the Shakot. So, it looks like he's got blue eyes. It looks like he's got definitely no likelihood of darkest brown or brown eyes at all. So he's 100%, like, most likely he's got blue eyes. Uh, not 100%, but most likely his eye color is blue. Most likely his hair color is dark blonde, but other hair colors like light blonde or dark brown are also possible. Uh, he doesn't have black hair or red hair, but he could have pretty much any hair color besides those. But most likely his hair color is dark blonde. His skin color is most likely white, although palest skin is also possible for him. Uh, olive or light brown or dark brown skin is not possible. And his hair texture is most likely straight, although it's very difficult to determine. Uh, this is not a very high quality file. He's got blue eye type 3, blue eye type 2, and blue eye type blue eye type 1. So he's got the whole package when it comes to blue eye haplotypes. And he does not have any light color variants in any of the MC1R variations, so uh, he's not predisposed to being ginger. All right. Uh, what about the phenotype oracle? Uh, okay. So that's what he's closest to, the phenotype he's, he resembles the most for number one, first place, then second place, then third place, 
and for the models for admixture models a mixture of 50% this plus 50% that resembles him closest followed by 50% this 50% that followed by 50% this 50% that followed by once 50% uh, this and 50% that so he's getting modeled as a mixture of um, mainly nordic types plus other nordic types that seems to be the case he's definitely very northern european in his appearance uh all right now we're gonna move on to the polygenic risk scores and the actual like trades portion of the video so it looks like he's got a slightly above average level of odds for myopia uh he's got a average odds for primary biliary cirrhosis He's got average odds for stroke. He's got higher than average odds for male pattern hair loss, which is not surprising because he's a European. Uh, nothing relevant was found for atrial fibrillation or deep vein thrombosis. He's got average odds for bipolar type 1 and schizophrenia. He's got below average odds for diabetes. He's got below average odds for Alzheimer's. He's got below average odds for multiple sclerosis. Uh, no risk variance for breast cancer out of 4. Pretty good. 8 for testicular cancer out of 12, which is not so good. Uh, zero risk variance for... Zero risk variance for celiac disease out of 4. Zero risk variance for GSS, okay, really good. No risk variance for Crohn's disease, no risk variance for Raffenstein's, and nothing was found, nothing relevant was found for Parkinson's either. All right, now let's check his biomarkers panel, and we're going to move on to blood type. So for the biomarkers panel, it looks like he's got a slightly below average level of vitamin D. Okay, that's kind of typical. Above average level of LDL cholesterol, which is kind of unfortunate. You don't want to have that, but he's still sort of in the healthy range. Below average level of HDL cholesterol, which one, once again, you don't want to have that, but he's still sort of in the healthy range. Uh, it looks like he's got a, a slightly above average level of glucose. Once again, kind of unfortunate. Uh, average level of hemoglobin and slightly below average blood pressure, which is good. Also, spot on average level of iron in the blood. So once again, that's pretty good. Nothing is unusual about this result, aside from the... I guess, slightly alarming high levels of LDL cholesterol. All right, let's scroll past all of this stuff and see if there's anything I want to talk about. This is not a very high quality file, hence why a lot of the relevant stuff is not found here. Uh, I mean, this file is, is, is quite small. And somebody on YouTube asked me to make a video about all the Turlogiskia samples. But what they don't realize is that all of these samples uh, out of these samples, this is the most high quality sample. Like, and it's still horrible. So, what am I going to make a video on? There is not much for me to talk about. Um, okay, so he's got warrior genotype in MAOA. Very interesting. Slower breakdown of dopamine, therefore higher dopamine levels and certain advantages in attention tasks. Uh, he's a carrier of a rare allele associated with longer sleep duration. Very interesting. Um, okay. He does not carry the, the European lact. Oh, oh, no, he does. He does. He's got TT here, which means he has two derived variants for European lactose persistence mutation and is definitely not lactose intolerant. So he does carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Yeah. Uh, okay, we're going to skip all that. I don't really care about this. No micropenis. Good to see. No micropenis is always good to see. And his genotype in EZAR is very European. He does not have East Asian EZAR. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Um, there's too much to talk about. I don't want to. I can't do this. Uh, he's got two risk variants in OPN. One is W out of two for color blindness, which is definitely very interesting. Uh, but color blindness is very rare, so you you probably need to have a lot more than just two. Um, okay. Okay. 
and his blood type is mostly most likely type O, but it was done based on a very limited number of SNP calls. You cannot exactly determine blood type based on just like these six calls. So his blood type could be type A as well, and we can't really know for sure uh, unless they uh, test this this sample with a better chip. But for now, I guess we're going to have to settle it's likely type O or type A. We can't know exactly. Well, that's pretty much all I had to show you here. Thanks for watching my video until the very, <coughs> until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.